Not that I'm extremely privy to the backroom dealings that go on in producers' offices, but the cliches of pitch meetings have been made abundantly clear in recent comedy bits from around the YouTubes, from much more popular channels than this one. It's pretty clear, though, that these meetings aren't the deepest of conversations. The elevator pitch is alive and well. All you need is a good premise, like Gilligan's Island, in space. That's how I see the meeting, the filmmakers of The Deep House, going. It's a haunted house. Underwater. The thing is, a movie just isn't an idea. You have to follow through with a lot more stuff to make the film work. Let's see if horror filmmakers Alexandre Bustillo and Julian Maury had difficulty expanding this great idea, or if it turned out to be super easy. Bear... Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. The Deep House is new, available, streaming on Epix. It's also available on demand and digital download from Paramount Home Entertainment. It's directed by Alexandre Bustillo and Julian Maury and written by Alexandre Bustillo, Julian Maury, and Julian David. Tina, played by Camille Rowe, and Ben, played by James Jagger, are young thrill-seeking YouTubers looking for unique experiences as they travel across France collecting encounters with the strange and paranormal. It's on this trip that a local tells the couple about a house that stands intact at the bottom of a lake. Upon arrival, the couple are able to enter the home, but soon find that leaving the home and the lake itself will be much more challenging as the submerged home is also haunted by restless spirits. A while back, there was a film release called Mary, a film about a haunted boat. When I heard of this premise, I thought it was ingenious, as it wouldn't be until the boat was out on the high seas that the creepy stuff starts, and that left the family with nowhere to go. I couldn't wait to see this film because I thought the premise was so interesting and full of ideas. Unfortunately, past that initial interesting idea of the haunted boat, the film proved to be typical and forgettable, despite Gary Oldman doing his best to make the whole thing interesting. I mention Mary because when I saw the trailer for The Deep House, I felt the same pangs of interest. The idea of a haunted house submerged underwater is really cool. But just because the idea is cool doesn't mean your movie is. You gotta do some work beyond that, and unfortunately the Deep House seems to barely break the surface of possibilities the premise suggests. I don't want to doubt Bustillo and Maurice's talents in Scare Fu. They delivered something horrifying with Inside, but have struggled to live up to that level of horror with their follow-ups, Leatherface, Levide, and most recently Candisha. Out of all the follow-ups, Candisha was the only one that really delivered for me, with Leatherface and Levid offering up an interesting take on their respective genres, the slasher and the haunted house, but lackluster execution. Unfortunately, the Deep House follows suit of the latter two, as there really is a lot of foreboding tension as the couple descend into the lake and make their way into the decrepit home under the water. Much like the palpable thrill of A Dark Night, the depths of water make for a real sense of danger from all sides. Given that the only thing keeping the couple alive is a small tank of ever-decreasing oxygen adds to the stakes, and I think the only thing that really works completely is the urgency put upon this amount of time the couple has underwater before the air runs out. This puts a timer on the entire film, and successfully makes things tenser and tenser as the film goes on. I will recognize that Bustillo and Maury were able to capture this suspense device and use it well, right up to the admittedly tense final moments. That said, the movie between the tense ending and the promising opening really doesn't make good on the intriguing premise. Sure, the house is haunted and there are bodies floating around the place where they shouldn't be. There are some shocking scenes where the couple discovers the floating bodies of the strange family who lived in the home, and having them converse and attempt to move around them did cause a tingle or two down my spine. But having the bodies right there floating in front of them, it really isn't a shock when one of their eyes open, it's more of a waiting game. It would have been more interesting had there been the dead bodies, but also a real threat of ghosts. So the bodies are more like morbid barriers in the way of these divers rather than just reanimated corpses. 
I understand that the Deep House was most likely made on the cheap, and a lot of CG wasn't able to be accomplished, so ghostly spectrals were out of the question, especially in the treacherous underwater environment. But I think it would have made for a better film had the threat in this haunted house hadn't just been the soggy dead. The Deep House isn't scareless. It does consist of some wonderfully shot scenes that feel surreal given that this is a house in a place where it shouldn't be. There is the reliance on a few too many jump scares for my tastes. The acting is okay, but not stellar, but the relationship between the two leads felt believable and comfortable. I didn't hate myself for sitting through the deep house, but like many have said, I really just felt as if the barest of effort was put into the actual scares after the house was built underwater. It's almost as if the filmmakers were too distracted with the technical aspects of filming underwater to be bothered with actually doing something new in regards to haunts in a haunted house. It's a shame, but The Deep House is another one of those movies that really doesn't have much life past its premise. There are whiffs of some of the filmmakers' best work from inside as they achieve a feeling of claustrophobia in being trapped in a single location for most of the film with a real threat after them but it doesn't overpower the lack of true scares and memorable moments of terror. That'll be it for today. Please chime in down below in the comments and let me know how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. So guys, you know how YouTube works. I'd love to be able to dedicate more time to this channel. I'm not monetized yet, so if you want to help me out, remember to hit all the pertinent bells and whistles down below. Want some spooky comics to read? I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look out for. Both Grave Trancers and Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, can be found in only the finest of comic book shops. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on my website, mlmillerwrites.com. If you really want to show your support, I also have a Patreon page, at mlmiller. Look for the link to my Patreon page down below. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. Stuck inside your reality Your doom Oh, your doom Your Yeah.